I want to start off by saying thank you for subscribing to the channel. So I want to introduce you to our next new feature to the channel called Doctrine Detox. Today we're going to talk about the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Books have been written about it. Tons of messages have been preached about it. Tons of teachings have gone on about it. But the anointing is actually simple because the anointing is something that only God can give. We're going to get into a real quick, simple overview of what the anointing is, and hopefully it'll give you a guideline so that you will not fall heir to false teaching. The anointing is one of the most misunderstood terms in the Bible. This misunderstanding spans many denominations from spiritual Baptists to Catholics and even ironically charismatics. What exactly is the anointing? It's simpler than you think. More Lord. Whoa! More Lord. Everybody, place, place that anointing, that crown, that gift upon someone else's head. <laughs> Keep praying. Every single one of you, impartation, legacy, legacy. Now, nowhere legacy. in the Bible is the anointing ever portrayed as a mystic force that sends people hurtling to the floor, into convulsions, or into fits of hysterical laughter, or episodes of holy rolling. Yet today, these phenomena are readily retributed to the anointing. Now, neither is it presented as a physical sensation which can be felt. But due to ignorance, many Christians make the mistake that the anointing is some type of sensation that gives them goosebumps or even adrenaline rushes, which even the ungodly can experience that. There are a ton of preachers who prey on this ignorance by the overuse of crowd control techniques to stir up people in their emotions, and then they claim to have a great anointing upon themselves. But what is the anointing that is so much talked about today? Well, to anoint means to smear on or to rub. In the Old Testament, people, animals, and objects were literally anointed and rubbed with oil. Now, this was done for many purposes. Sheep were anointed to protect them from blood-sucking insects. A shield would be anointed to maintain its physical properties. Also, officials were anointed as a sign of consecration. In a different sense, anyone used by God for any purpose was referred to as God's anointed. Now, this included prophets, priests, rulers, and even pagan kings like Cyrus. Now, Jesus is referred to as the Christ or the anointed one. Thus, the anointing was related in part to function performed as well as the office held. In other words, God anointed those whom he appointed. It is against the backdrop of the New Testament that understanding of the anointing best finds its meaning. Jesus began his ministry by not being anointed with oil, but by the Holy Spirit. His office was that of Messiah, and his anointing was to perform functions associated with that. It is that concept of the anointing that applies today. Government officials are still called anointed by God in the sense that they are appointed for a specific task, but the church can experience a deeper anointing by the Holy Spirit. The anointing is a divine enablement that a helps us to accomplish God's purpose on the earth. God's work cannot be done through human might nor power, but only by his spirit. However, we are co-laborers with him. His spirit works in us and through us by anointing us. And the anointing has a twofold purpose. Firstly, the anointing works in us by teaching us God's ways and conforming us to his likeness. Very important. Secondly, it works through us by giving us supernatural ability to do God's work, to witness, to preach, and to teach. It is useful to note that since different believers have different purposes and giftings, they are anointed and equipped differently. An evangelist is equipped to win the loss, a pastor to lead his flock, and a singer to minister comfort. Now, if everyone ministered with their anointing, there will be no mental burnout or fatigue. Those things only happen when people take too much upon themselves. 
In the same way, a car without oil would eventually shut down. A human being cannot do God's work without God's help. With the anointing, preachers would not have to force people to take heed and singers would not have to prod people to get into the act of worship. These are automatic responses to the anointing. Evangelists would not have to fabricate figures just to make their ministries look impressive. People would be genuinely saved. The anointing would also save churches from formalism. Formalism is the destiny of any organization that attempts to do God's work through human strength alone. Now, the first step in ministering with the anointing is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Then as one begins to obey God's perfect will, one becomes more entrusted with the anointing. Man is never commanded to be anointing. Neither is he rebuked for not being powerful enough, but he is told to obey. The anointing is God's job, not man's. He will anoint those whom he appoints as they submit to his will and humble obedience. In conclusion, the anointing is given by God through the Holy Spirit. Every now and again, I'll get someone who will compliment a teaching. They'll say, boy, you're really anointed. And most often my reply is, I'm not anointed, but the word of God is. If you desire to be used by God, my best suggestion would be to stay clean of mind, stay clean of heart and be obedient. God is the one who gives the gifts and will allow us to wield them as he deems necessary. Thank you for listening to Doctrine Forensics and Doctrine Detox. If you like this material, please click like, subscribe and share. God bless you and your families.